All right, going on to section 1.2, adding and subtracting uh, positive and negative numbers. So basically, we're going to be um, adding positive and negative numbers. And uh, what I'd like to do right now is uh, show you two ways that you can think about adding positive and negative numbers. So first, I want to start with these blocks, and then I'm going to convert over to a number line and just show you uh, that how, how you can use positive and negative blocks and relate that to a number line. And then, thirdly, I will show you just the written rule. But instead of just showing you the rule and then plowing through problems, I just want to kind of give a little bit of a, um, of a conceptual understanding of what's going on. Okay, adding positive and negative numbers. Say if I wanted to do a problem uh, such as uh, 3 plus negative 4. Okay, so I have a positive number and a negative number. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to represent this positive 3 with 3 positive uh, white blocks there. So I'm going to say here's 1, 2, and 3. So these three white boxes represent three positives. That's why I have right here that these uh, boxes are positive. And then I'm going to put four negative boxes right here. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Okay, so I'm gonna put these a little closer here. All right, so basically this is how this is gonna work here. If for for every one positive and every negative, uh, they're gonna cancel out. Okay, so for this positive and negative, those guys cancel out. Those guys cancel out, and those guys cancel out. So notice what we have remaining. We have one red square. And the squares represent negative, so you can say that this equals negative one because of this negative. There's only one one red uh, square. Now, see, let's see how this translates into a number line. Okay, so check this out. Let's do the same problem right here: three plus negative four. So if you start at three. Okay, so we're going to start with this number right here. If you start at three and then go ahead and put a little dot right there. Now check this out. Remember, we talked about how numbers that travel to the right are positive and numbers that travel to the left are negative. So if I have a negative 4, then that means I must travel to the left. So from 3, okay, starting from 3, I'm going to go to the left 4. Okay, so if I go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, look at where I ended up. I ended up at uh, negative one and notice that that was the answer that we got right there all right let me do another one with you and see if this can uh, make sense here um, so say if I had uh, something of the nature of like negative two and I'm gonna try to use smaller numbers because I don't want to go off my number line here and I don't have so many little squares here uh, negative two plus uh, negative three Okay, so that means I need negative, I need two of the red squares. So I need two of these guys. So one, two. And then I need three of the red squares over here. So one, two, three. So again, for, for every positive and negative, they cancel out. But here, I don't I don't have any positive and negatives I only have it all all negatives and so since I'm supposed to add well I have two negatives and three negatives then that means I have a total of five one two three four five so I have a total of five of them so it's negative five <coughs> so notice that <coughs> excuse me notice that I'm using a negative because these boxes are red you see if, it, if these were all of, of the white squares and that means I would use a positive 5 and watch how this is also illustrated using the number line if I start right here with number 2 okay, that's my starting point start at negative 2 and then move to the left negative 3 why to the left because it's negative numbers that go to the left are uh, negative so if I go to the left negative uh, three, 3 spaces 1 2 3 notice where I'm at negative 5 Okay, so th that's just a way for you to think about it using positive and negative tiles and and using a number line. So here's here's really what we're doing. Uh, if you just want to see it as a written rule, okay. So really, there are two two rules here. 
Okay, you have the rule. Okay, so, so what happens when you are adding numbers that have the same sign? So adding same sign numbers. And what I mean by that is uh, something like this. If I have uh, um, like negative 8 plus like negative 3 or uh, 7 plus 2 or negative 19 plus a negative 4. See the right here. So if they have the same sign, see a negative 8 and negative 3, they have the same sign. Positive 7 and a positive 2, they have the same sign. Negative 19 and a negative 4, they have the same sign. So how do you deal with numbers when you add them and they have the same sign? You simply really are just doing this. You add both numbers up and you keep the sign of both the numbers. Okay, so add both of them up. 8 plus 3 is 11, but keep sign of both numbers. Well, they both have the same sign, so it's negative. Okay, uh, here add both numbers and keep the sign of both numbers. Well, both are positive, so that's why it's a positive 9. Here, um, add both numbers and I get uh, 23 and uh, keep the sign of both numbers. And that's basically rule 1. When you add the same sign, uh, numbers you're always going to just add both of them and then keep the same sign. Now, what about if you're um, adding different signs? So, here are some examples here uh, 7 plus like negative 5 or uh, negative 27 uh, plus, I don't know, 7, uh, and then we'll just make up another one right here negative 1000 plus 500 I don't know right so what if they have different signs so positive negative negative positive negative positive so if they have different signs what are you supposed to do well you subtract their 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 absolute value meaning what's the absolute value of seven seven what's the absolute value of negative five five so subtract those two uh, that's what this means right here subtract their absolute value so whatever both of their absolute values are subtract them and it would probably be best to now subtract the bigger from the smaller. So 7 minus 5 is 2. But now look at the second one. It says, now keep the sign, keep sign of the greatest absolute value. So 7 and negative 5, which one has the greatest absolute value? Well, uh, 7 does. So that means it's positive 2. Okay, done. Okay, so what's the absolute value of negative 27 and 7? Well, it's 27 and 7. Subtract them, and I get uh, 20. But then you keep the sign of the greatest absolute value. Well, negative 27 has a bigger absolute value than 7, so it's negative 20. And what I mean by greatest absolute value, let's, let's reflect on what that means. Which one of these is further away from 0? Is negative 27 further away or is 7? Well, this one, right? We're looking at whatever one is furthest away from 0 is the greatest absolute value. And then right here, negative, negative 1,000 plus 500 is going to give us a negative 500. Why? Because the absolute value minus the absolute value is 500. And th since this has the greatest absolute value, uh, you take that sign. Okay? So let's just do uh, now a few examples here uh, quickly. So since, they, since negative 6 plus negative 15, see how they both have the same sign? So remember what the rule was, if they had the same sign, then you add them. 15 plus 6 is 21, and you keep both signs, negative 21. Here, since they both have the same sign, you um, add them, so 2.3, and you keep the same sign. There we go. Uh, right here, you add both of these and keep the same sign. So, but here we had to do a little bit of work uh, with common denominators. So, if I want 4 and 8 to be the same denominator, I'm going to have to multiply this by 2. So now this fraction becomes negative 6 over 8, and I'm going to leave this the way it is negative 5 eighths. So, so now that we have a common denominator, we could just add negative 6 plus negative 5, negative 11 over 8. And there we have it. We'll do one more example here. Example number two. I'm adding numbers with different signs. So different signs means we subtract these. So 7 minus 3 is 4. Take the sign of the bigger absolute value. So since this is bigger, it's going to be negative 4. Again, subtract these 4 and keep
keep the sign of the bigger absolute value, which is 7, which is positive, so it stays like that. Here, uh, subtract 4.6 minus 3.8 is, uh, let's see, 0.8, and then keep the sign of the bigger absolute value. The biggest absolute value is a uh, 4.6, so it's going to be just that what it is. Uh, right here, we need a common denominator first. I'm going to multiply that by 4. So now this right here is negative 3 eighths plus 4 over 4. All right, so now that we have a, oops, sorry, actually not 4, JK. Let's do that again. Um, let me multiply that by 2. So let's multiply that then by 2 because I want that to be 8, right? So negative 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. There we go. Sorry if you can hear my dog. She's going crazy back there. Negative 1 or negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 8, right? Because I subtract these two and keep the sign of the bigger absolute value.